We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the before. Content is Profit One, podcast. Two, we spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more on how to create the content into profit, go to contentprofit.com. <laughs> Did I say it right? I don't think I said it right. It's no, okay. he got it right. He got it right, guys. Oh, right, you know, right, just right. go www.contentisprofit.com. <laughs> and today, guys, we're going to talk about how to create influential messaging and stand out. Disclaimer, I did take this <laughs> headline, this caption straight from our guest website just because it was Ooh, so good. I'm like, you know is. what? That's what he does. That's what he's coming here to teach you guys about. So... I'm going to borrow the, the headline. So, guest, thank you so much for that. <laughs> do we have a sponsor today, Fonzie? We do, guys. Oh, you know, really? You, you want to know who it is? Yes. Yes, I want to know. Today's sponsor, know. guys, it is Content Momentum, brought to you by the one and only The Biz Road Let right here. Just, Luis let's and Luis, go, let's guys, go. if you have long-form content like this one you're watching right now or listening to, podcast, and you want to turn it into an army of little minions, right? Value-packed, bite-sized assets that you can share it all over social media consistently, then just come to us, send us a DM. We want to help you out. We want to make that happen for you guys. Let's Again, make it happen. Content momentum. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. You ready? Yeah, that was on fire, bro. Let's go. Thank I, you. Oh, this coffee for those me. listening, guys, please <laughs> don't forget, go ahead actually and hit smash that subscribe button so you know when those episodes are dropping on your phone and uh, and follow us on social media at Beast Bros. Go. I, I did uh, the and and like you do. Huh? Yeah, that's oh, right. Look at you. Look at guys. That. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you will, don't forget to share it and, and leave a five-star oh, you, review. You do it so much better. You do it so much better. All right. So we're so excited for today's episodes. You know why? Because today's guest is what people would call a boss. Yeah. We actually came across one of his pieces of content and immediately thought we need to have him on the podcast. Today's guest speaks our language. I know, guys. We we know we're not talking about the language of love, okay? <laughs> we're talking about the language of content. Yes. yes. Absolutely. So you guys get a better idea. Today's guest has built a seven-figure brand messaging and video advertising business. He has worked with companies such as ClickFunnels, Teachable mm. and mm. the few, the proud, the Marines. Total boss move, guys. Total, Total boss, move. boss move. Yep, yep, yep. So not only that, but he has received the Two Comma Club Award for making over seven figures in sales. He also launched a video advertising campaign with millions of impressions that got retweeted by the one and only Donald Trump. He is just an incredible entrepreneur that quit his corporate job that he actually liked to go all in on his dream business. Whew. I don't know about you guys, but I am so pumped up. Please welcome host of the Visionaries podcast, founder of Content Supply, and total buzz, Mr. Dallin Need. How are you doing? Welcome, Dallin. We're so excited to have you here, man. Thank you so much for man. coming. Yeah, bro. Yeah, oh, we're excited, man. I know, like, I'm going to take this one. It's my fault. You know, we literally, like, changed dates, like, five times. <laughs> and I, I completely no, apologize. <laughs> but it's amazing. Thank you again for being here live on the show with us. And I'm extremely excited to actually, you know, share your story, share what you do, like, all these little nuggets and, and so on. So, you know, you're tuning in from California. Is that what you said? Yeah, Los Angeles. Oh, baby. LA. Sounds nice. Yeah, City sounds nice. City of Angels. City of Angels. And face masks. And yeah, face, and face masks. Yeah, sorry, Fonzie. Wife You're not an sorry. angel or have face masks right I don't, now. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I'm not in LA, guys. <laughs> Dude, Dallin, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about you. Like, how, like, I, I'm very curious. A dream, a, a job that you liked and now your dream job. So that's, you know, go hand in hand. Like, how did that happen? What's your story? Yeah, great question. Well, how long do you have? No. So <laughs> Let's make it happen. 24-hour marathon. <laughs> yeah, 24 hours. You can go live forever, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> so so definitely my, my story is interesting because a, a lot of us entrepreneurs, I'm sure you guys can relate, ditched uh, the 9 to 5, ditched mm. the commute because you didn't like it. You had a, a boss you didn't like, all those things, and that wasn't really my case. I enjoyed my job. The brain was incredible. Yeah. My co my boss were all great. But uh, I felt like there was something more to my career. 
I wanted more autonomy. Mm. Uh, and, and so I was in a nine to five. I was working for several cruise brands, uh, I was traveling the world, producing uh, films, video advertising campaigns and doing incredible projects. But then um, I, you know, I was like, part of me, I still live in LA and I was like, I'm making okay money, but I'm not making too much to survive living <laughs> in an expensive state. Exactly. Uh, so I started freelancing on the side, kind of testing things out. I started a business, did it wrong, wrong closed it down. And, and eventually I started working with uh, different entrepreneurs yeah. who just connected me different ways and introduced me to this whole world of online entrepreneurship. Mm. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is this is possible. Like I, I can do this thing. I could do my own business, yeah. which I um, didn't really know I wanted to do in, in specific de detail. I thought it was going to come like 10 years down the road. Yeah. And so it really like, um, it was interesting because I, I, I wanted to do a lot more of interesting even more interesting projects working for uh, my previous employer and this is like two and a half years ago but uh i felt like things were like stifled like you had the corporate bureaucracy you had yeah. limited mm. budgets and and so uh to chase this autonomy and freedom i was like well why don't I, like i'm already making more money um working this second job my second business <laughs> yeah uh, why not just ditch it and so i did and haven't looked back since, you know, um, that's been its fair share of struggles. But but in the mm. business I started, by the way, speaking your guys' language, I called it content supply. Um, I was really inspired by this idea that um, our message is the most powerful way to connect with their audience, to sell products and services, and the best way, and the, really the only way to get your message out there is through content, right? Yeah, uh, video is my main language of content. But um, your message can be shared through other types, be that podcast like we're doing now, slash video. Uh, yeah. The written design, the list goes on. And so I was like, well, why not supply business owners with the content they need to grow their business? Yeah, I love it. And let me tell you, I love the name Content Supply. I mean, the positioning in there is perfect. Like, if you didn't have like a slogan, any headline or anything, <laughs> yeah. I would already know what your business is about it because of the name. And, and it's amazing, right? I think that just right there, there's a lesson for a lot of people that are always thinking, uh, you know, oh, what am I going to name my business and all this stuff, like people that are that are starting, right? That they might be focusing on their logo, right? I went on your website, your logo is content supply. Like that's it too, you know? Yes. So yeah. it, that is so important because immediately paints the picture in the prospect's head that vis that's visiting is saying, hey, this is what we can do for you, which is absolutely amazing. And I have a, I have a few questions here. I, Be I, before before yeah. you dive into that <laughs> rabbit hole, because I know right. that you will. <laughs> and let, let me talk. Thank you. Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> Dan, dude, I, I, I feel so... Uh, exactly, right? Thank you. Thank you, Fancy. <laughs> Don't play on his team. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> dude, Dali, I, I, I'm a team player all right <laughs> there we go uh, i feel so identified with your story on on the dream job right and and the company that you worked for and uh, i had the same very similar experience i used to work in the fitness industry you know and at the same time you know we were running this thing on the side and they gave us massive opportunity they gave us like these resources to be able to do it but at the same time even though i was loving that job i was i, I was like stopped or we were stopped by the bureaucracy of corporate you know we're like, oh my God, there's so many, so many limitations here, right? So we're like, hey, if this is not, you know, we cannot execute here, let's go ahead and do this time, this thing full time and we're having a blast, right? So it's okay. I think like your story is very powerful because there might be so many people out there, right? That might be starting something that might be investing in content, might be creating their, their own thing, their own, you know, position in their own business, but they still love what they do and that's okay to sometimes pivot a little bit and move towards what they actually will call their dream business or their dream thing, right? So thank you so much for bringing that point home because we don't have to like be completely fighting against the job that we currently have. <laughs> That's okay. No, not at all. Not at all. So thank you so much. I'm actually going to save that story in like a little little basket here to share with some people. <laughs> Uh, this is not now, Fonsi. I just wanted to make turn. that point. Yeah, yeah, I can go ahead and do their questions. Awesome. All right, there so we go. <laughs> first, I want to talk about, you know, like you mentioned that you actually started a, f a first business and it failed. 
I'm curious about that, right? Because like, I didn't, yeah. I don't think I heard that in the podcast that I was listening. So, you know, what what did that failure mean meant to you? Because you went on and then started a second business, right? And I, I feel like a lot of people might get caught up in one failure and then quit forever. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit of context. Before I started this first business, in, this first business after I was with my corporate employer, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I had no business experience, at least like no educate, no like academics. I studied IT yeah. of all things. Um, I was going to go and be an IT person mm -hmm. at a company. Uh, and then I, I ditched that as well. And and so I, I didn't really have the, the business experience apart from just doing little odd jobs and kind of entrepreneur type jobs since I was young. And so... Um, the approach of how to start a business, I did it kind of backwards. I thought, um, like, the, the way I approached this particular business, I called it um, Time Capsule, and it was mm. going to create uh, documentary films mm. for, um, you know, aging families, like couples. You know, I, I think the intention was great, and there's yeah. films because I was doing it for a lot of, of people in my, my personal network. And I was like, oh, I like this kind of like, it's like a hobby. It kind of gives, scratches my creative storytelling itch. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't a product or service that people were actively asking for, let alone willing to pay for. Mm. And that was my first mistake to think I can make a business out of it. And, and so, just the harsh reality is like, oh, oh my gosh. Like once I started learning more about the proper business structuring and the steps you should take uh, to actually have a successful business, People need to pay you money. Yeah. The only way they're going to pay you money is if you're actually solving a problem and yeah. you're solving a problem in a way that they're willing to pay you for it. And so I was thinking that I was doing that, maybe not in those terms, but I yeah. absolutely wasn't. And so it was, there's no cash flow. Yeah. Um, and and it, let alone like it's, it is a struggle when you have a full-time job. I was working like seven to five basically every day. Uh, I'm trying to fit it in and like get the structure in place. So it was overwhelming already. Yeah. And so I, by the time I closed down and was like admitted to failure, I still had like a, a back, like a safety net yeah. uh, of my employer. And, uh, and so I, I, I probably for another year, I just kind of stopped kind of a lot of entrepreneur things altogether, just kind of taking a break, focusing on my, my day job. And, uh, and it really wasn't until I was like, okay, like I'm ready. Like what's next? Like, how do I, yeah. how do I do this? So I started and actually, to be honest, is like, I need more money. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was, that was kind hey, of the man. first motivator. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> that. That was yeah. definitely your motivator as well. You know, when we started and I, I, I would risk, risk it out here and say that is most people's motivator when they start oh, the totally. business. Right. Yeah. You can't, you can't say it's just. I want to impact the world and change people's lives. Like, no, I don't believe that's the first reason most people get into business. Yeah. Like you got it. You got to make money. You got to live. Yeah. And, and that's like one of the, you know, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That's one of the basic needs you got to fulfill absolutely. before you can go to self-fulfillment, uh, yeah. which is at the top. So, yeah, absolutely. No, I, I agree with that, you know, and what you just told me kind of like ties to the next question that I wanted to ask, because you were talking about, when you started your second business now you kind of like found the importance on on the messaging right like that importance of the messaging and you wanted to help others find their message so when you tell me this story now that you said you know like this business wasn't selling i'm i'm curious because do you think everybody you know a lot of people are like follow your passions you can make a business out of your passions right and now you tell me like there's actually some businesses that i maybe are not gonna are not gonna work and it's okay to quit and move on to the next one right and it came to mm -hmm. mind that example that russell brunson gives when he g gives some of his speeches that is that even a guy that has like a tour for bigfoot sells right through webinars or, or through cl click funnels so i'm like wow that is interesting so do you think it is actually a messaging thing so if you would have had the knowledge of messaging and all that stuff running your first business Do you think you could have made that work, like positioning yourself differently? Or do you actually sure. think there might be some businesses that are not meant to work whatsoever? Uh, I mean, some businesses, uh, I would say, are probably not meant to work. 
but it doesn't mean you can't pivot and make that work mm -hmm. still within that same licensing structure. To be honest, like how you license your business doesn't really matter as much as what's built inside it. You know, it's yep. just, that's just a legal um, paper based thing. But, uh, but for me, it definitely, it definitely came down to um, the messaging. I just didn't have um, any clear messaging, uh, particularly one that spoke my customer's language. Yeah. Uh, and so in re in, in adjusting that approach and recognizing uh, as early as possible, the better you can clarify your brand message, the more you can know how you can create offers and you know products and yeah. services on your business. Yeah. Um, because your message will guide that decision. Uh, it will give you language on how to talk about your customers, how to talk about what you do, uh, and it'll allow you to understand, oh, I can pivot this way because I know my messaging will resonate like this. Like I can create this course, I can yeah. sell this physical product, I can offer this service yeah. because I understand how my customers are experiencing this story that I'm helping them transform. Yeah, I, I love it, you know, and I think, sorry, Daniel, I'm taking over here. <laughs> you can, bro, you can do a solo show, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so like, you know, like, one of the things we experienced when we started creating content, right? And we've talked about this story before. It took us about three years for, for us to get in front of the camera and finally start creating content. But one of the benefits is that we nailed down our message, right? We spent three years, you know, filling customer avatar forms, you know, pretending this was our dream client and this was our message and changing our offers so many times. But when we started actually talking, it was like a filter, right? Like our message got distilled, you know, like a good whiskey and it actually turned into something good. And now we know exactly what we do. So I'm curious, you know, when did you find out about the importance of messaging? What was that moment for you that like click in your mind that you are like, oh, like messaging is like probably in the top of the list when I work with my clients, right? And then how do you clarify that message? Because you were talking about it, right? Like you need to, to clarify the message. How do you do that? Yeah, you know, uh, the epiphany that I experienced as far as recognizing the importance of messaging um, came after I started Content Supply. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I was more in it from like a little bit more heavy on the artist side of like, you know, I love filmmaking, I love advertising. Uh, and so I knew content was a vehicle to sell. Yeah. Video was a vehicle to sell products and services. Uh, but what I recognized was that content is always going to change, right? Like VR, hologram, you know, like augmented reality, like that's going to, that's the future of a lot of content. We're going to, it's very going to be experiential. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, video is going to evolve. Like audio is an, an important thing right now. But what's what's timeless, what's never going to change is the message is how to create a clear message because the hundreds and thousands of years ago, you know, the message is how it was delivered. And oftentimes it was in person or written down based on what content was available at that time. Technology is accelerating yeah. how we can, you know, trial all these different types of content. But the more we can focus on having a clear message, um, content um, is generic enough to be yeah. relevant to the changing types of content. Uh, and and another thing too is, is uh, you know I I recognize I recognize like so I've always been a storyteller and I feel like definitely a story is a a way to make yourself stand out like having your unique story told yeah but also the the thing with messaging or storytelling and often messaging is it's not super tangible for people say like oh you know you put you put one dollar in and facebook ads you make two dollars on the back end you know so it's like that's tangible that's measurable yeah. a story or like messaging is not as tangible and so i, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just something fluffy, like another buzzword of story, and that messaging um, served a clear purpose and was essential before you really could do marketing effectively, let alone create content that was yeah. actually impactful. Oh, this and so, yeah, go ahead. Oh no, go continue. This is go <laughs> like I was just gonna make a quick a, a quick reflection, but I can wait for like two more minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and, and just to speak, so you you asked the question too, like clarifying your message. Mm. Uh, the overview to me uh, and the structure that we do in content supply comes in three phases. The first one comes down to messaging. Yeah. The second one comes down to marketing. The third one comes down to medium, which is your content type, um, which 
uh, I have an agency, um, part of Content Supply, that does video advertising. Nice. And, and so the more that you can hit on those three phases of your entire strategy, your marketing strategy, uh, the more it'll actually work for you. And so clarifying your message comes down to giving you the language, uh, literally the words you can use in any type of content uh, that helps you understand how to simply talk about what your company does, uh, how it does it, and and why it's important to your customers. Yeah. And by understanding what language to use, then your customers will either be immediately attracted to your business or be like, hey, that's not for me. But hey, I, I think I know someone um, who this is for. Yeah. And and so yeah. that's going to guide like how you script your videos or how you outline or script a webinar. Uh, you know, the list goes on. So that it to me, it just comes back down to like, how can I simplify the structure of um, planning, creating, and distributing content. Exactly. Love it. I, I love how you, that word, simplify, right? Because, you know, we've, we shared this in previous episodes, how, how we started with the show, you know, and uh, it was behind the concept of that minimal viable content, right? And, uh, and at first for us, we recorded these five episodes that are still in the vault, right? Because we added a ton of friction, like Mr. Perfectionist here, who's uh, in a perfectionist re in recovery, <laughs> right? He's like, he wanted the, the two cameras, the lighting, the stuff, the audio, the perfect. And guess what? Because we added all this friction that was never done, right? And then we started, we're like, okay, how can we actually stay consistent over time? Mm -hmm. And we started Facebook Lives. And for us, that was like the least friction, let's go video, let's do this. Like, because when you hit go live, that thing is published, whatever, right? So we started to notice that quality of the message is way better than the quality of the production at that stage, right? There's different stages that you can start playing with different things on the production side of things, depending on like who you're talking to or what's up. But for us at the time to start getting that friction, that quality of the message, right, was more valuable than the quality of the production because of the conversations that we started having. <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go. <laughs> this is our lost yeah. brother. Now we have like five more brothers. So right, uh, welcome go. to the family, man. <laughs> But, yeah. Well, but, no, it's funny. Like I use the phrase message over visual, which you, you literally just basically said that. And I, I can totally re totally relate with you from a perfectionist side. Cause it's like, you get the <laughs> artist side where like, I want to look professional. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, cause that means that I know what I'm talking, you know, like people would think, you know what you're talking about and it definitely goes a long way, but, um, you know, think of all the impactful cell phone ads or Absolutely. videos live streams that are out yeah. there. And so, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's hard. It's like, <laughs> it, honestly, it's still, I'm not completely over it. Um, I just kind of am learning to, to deal with it. Actually quick, quick hack, I guess, uh, I discovered, and you guys are doing it too. Cause we talked before we hit record. Um, you're using Ecamm live yep. to live stream, right? Yep. And it, you, know, you can pull my feed from Skype. You know, I've, uh, I mean, I think it's an incredible tool. And, and what I recognize though, is what has held me back from times from creating videos is the editing piece and i'm sure many people can relate to that it's like oh, oh my yeah. gosh like editing or repurposing i know you guys offer um <laughs> services like that you know and uh and so because editing is a whole hold up i was like well yeah. why not do some form of live editing like you don't have to do any post mm -hmm. after the video is recorded and you can just get the message out there and remove that barrier yeah. and then kind of over time right like you were saying like yeah we're gonna try this other feature and add all these these things where some people notice like me but most people won't, but it's still, it's, it kind of feeds our creative itch to be like, oh, like yeah. this is going to be fun as an artist to yeah. add this piece. So I'm kind of with you on that, like evolution of, um, the tech and the visual side yeah. being added into it. Absolutely. But recognizing that, um, it's, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's fun to put effort into those, but ultimately it shouldn't be the first focus. Yeah, I mean, and uh, sorry, Fonzie, now it's yeah, my turn. No, no, I'm sorry, okay. like, that's okay. <laughs> uh, but it's funny because sometimes, not sometimes, we actually go on YouTube a lot and, and start like studying these creators, right? And we go back like four years and, and I want for people listening, right? Like it takes, it takes time, like, but it takes time of getting your message out consistently to start like nailing down your message, right? Cashing in, making sure that you're having these conversations that can turn into profit, right? And then you can start investing and adding those pieces on the production side, right? Like we didn't even add a webcam till 
an episode ago. <laughs> and we're episode eight, right? It's, yeah. That's the thing, right? But the, the fact that we've been consistent with the show, with the relationships that we've been able to build, right, is allowed our business to grow on the other side. And uh, just before this interview, we're actually chatting with, with a couple that they're amazing consultants. They work with massive companies here in the States and they're about to go take a road trip for a full year with the whole family, right? And they want to go on this sprinter van and they want to start like recording their content and doing something with content. So they're like, guys, how, how do we do it? Like, what do we do? Like, how many views are you guys expecting us to, to? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like, so let's, you know, just document your journey and then have this show where you can actually bring outdoor companies. You have an awesome conversation. They can sponsor your vehicle. You give them their content. And then on the back end, you have this relationship where then you can sell your consulting services to these guys. And that's it, right? Is more There's more to, to this content game than just the audience itself. That's wonderful. That will come with time. But at the beginning, right, your message has to be on point. I'm making sure that that starts evolving. I'm moving the wheel for you and for your business. So yeah. that I think that over the past like five months for us has been a massive, massive point to that we've been trying to get across, right, to make sure that, that people start publishing consistently like you did, right? And then after that, yes, there's little pieces that you can start adding to improve the production, to improve the quality, to add people to the team and so on. And, and that way you can grow really good. Yeah, you know, I was actually watching a, a YouTube video before this and they test, then invest. And I was like, ooh, I might be taking that one. That, is, <laughs> that one is pretty good, right? Because a lot of people tend to, I feel, use the invest first as an excuse. Like, oh, if I have all this, I'm going to do it. But, I mean, we were victims of that. You know, we had the camera, we had the light, we had the mics, and we didn't do it. Like, we literally recorded those five episodes, and then we spent a year, over a year, with all the equipment in the closet just gathering dust, right? And it wasn't until we were like, okay, let's just do it live. Like, it doesn't matter, right? And the advantage, like, this was one, the roadcaster that we have right here was part of the investment. And if we couldn't plug it probably to the computer right now, and for it to record everything, we probably wouldn't be using it because it would be adding friction, right? So yeah. it's about that. It's like, okay, how can I remove the friction when I'm doing certain things? Um, so talking about friction, right? I'm curious about friction in your business. What is What are those challenges, right, that you find with your clients when you're trying to, you know, get them to... Not, not get them to buy the idea because let's say they're already they already bought into the idea of creating content. That's why they're coming to you, right? But what are some of the challenges of, of nailing down their messaging and producing the content for them to, you know, make them even, even more business? Yeah, that's a great question. And I would say it definitely depends on the level they are in their business where those who work with their agency oftentimes already have their messaging dialed in. Otherwise, they wouldn't have grown their business exactly. to where it's at. Uh, and, and so to me, like messaging comes into play for those who are first into our world of content supply and who are looking for initial support. And, and so a lot of times the friction that exists really for cl any client at any level uh, comes down to the time. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, like time, money is secondary, but, but time. And so I find when, when clients come to us, it's because they've either wasted time on video ads that didn't work to grow their business or on a video crew who was more, they were artists over scientists um, with how they approach their videos mm -hmm. or they try to do it themselves, you know, and waste all the time. Um, they tried to tr train a team member or they just av avoided it because they procrastinated it saying they didn't have the time to do it. And so I think time is, is definitely a major friction factor. Uh, and that crops up to each and every one of us, yeah. whether it's related to, you know, getting our message out to through video. Is it still on by the way? Oh, oh yeah. 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 You know, my, my video turns off. <laughs> no, we're still live. We see you, man. We see a big smile. <laughs> good, good. I saw it turn off my screen over here because I've got, speaking of like tech and friction, I've actually got separate cameras connected up over here. Love it. Um, and uh, yeah, and so time is a big one. And that's often the case for most most people. And then Damn. I would say as far as getting getting your message out there, um, you know, if someone's ready and they're, they're like, hey, I've got no issues with showing up on video, um, then it comes down to just uh, what they really need after like 
the friction is solved, um, they really need a, a mentor through the process. Mm. Um, because if someone wants to like, eat, regardless of, of the message being over the visual every day, people still want to look amazing on, on video yes. or in their content. They want to sound amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, especially, you know, from the agency perspective, when they're looking for a higher caliber, uh, of, of service, you know, that's done for them. Uh, the more you can give that confidence that you're going to look amazing. It's still going to feel authentic to your audience, but you're going to look amazing and uh, you're going to be able to present, you know, your best self. Yes. Uh, and so giving that confidence and that removing that fear of judgment that can exist if they say something wrong or, you know, it's it, it's kind of that like director. It's kind of like you're a film yeah. director um, from a video, you know, inside videos, a film director who's working with maybe like a child actor. Not to compare clients to child actors, but <laughs> child actors could have like maybe those fears of like, oh, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing right. Or, you know, a first time actor, like this is my first big break. You yeah. know, I'm on this mm -hmm. big project and I don't want to embarrass myself <laughs> or do something wrong. And so it's like, how can we feel, help people feel comfortable yeah. and know that, you know, they're they're in the right place and working with the right people. Yeah, so cool. We, we actually have... Uh, well, a fun story, right? Like uh, a few months ago, we we're like, "Hey, let's test this thing, right?" And and we posted on Instagram after a few days of of uh, publishing live. We're like, "Hey, we're looking for five people that we can jump on a quick call with them and help you with your publishing framework, right?" And one of those people that jumped on the call, she she works on the accounting side, right? And she's like, "Hey, I want to start publishing," and you know, she's a woman, right? And we're like, "Okay, we need you to get." like the content moving we need to remove all friction possible right and we need to get you get your message out so you can start filtering things like dial it down and so on and see if people respond to this she had a huge fo following like even without publishing so we go okay you know what does consistency look to you so for her it was three times a week because that was the resources that was the time that she had available to actually start publishing right and uh when we break it down we're like okay you know how long are you guys uh, are you gonna go live for how, like what's what, what are the topics like just general sense right what are the stories that you're gonna start sharing and uh, she got all that and we're like awesome are you ready to get started and she's like what do i wear <laughs> right she's like <laughs> i don't i don't i don't know like everything else was ready to go but her limitation was the clothing because mm -hmm. hey me as a guy i can just put a hat on and especially like the way that we think it's okay. Like I'll just go out and, and that's fine. Right. Clearly Fonzie doesn't even shave. So <laughs> like it doesn't matter, but you know, under her eyes. Yes. Okay. So how can we remove the friction of, Hey, I got to look the best way I can like possible. Perfect. Let's set up your outfit every Sunday, every Tuesday and, and, and every Thursday. So you don't have to think about what you're going to wear the day of the recording and then just schedule your time so you can do your makeup and stuff because for you, publishing is a priority, right? So we got to establish if that's actually a priority, just like you said. So I love it because, yes, when there's like those high level clients, absolutely, you know, that experience of creating the content has also to be very enjoyable for them to continue to do it, right? And then if you feel amazing and your message is great, is on point, I mean, what's, you know, what's not to like? After that, everything is a win, right? Whatever comes after that, it's a win because you're also going to start experiencing this process of growth, right? But it has to start at some level, right? Some people have the resource of time and they can do it themselves. Some people have the resource of money so then they can hire a team like you guys, right? To create all these awesome content. So love how you bring both perspective, you know, from somebody that's starting to, you know, the big, big people client, right? Yeah. I, I love that you mentioned to the fear of judgment, right? And I've said it so many times, like, Publishing has so many pros on it. Like, honestly, I don't think I've ha I, I found a, a con to, to publishing, to creating content. And for me, one of the biggest ones is like, I mean, I already told you, right? We spent three years trying to create content. And it was actually because of fear of judgment. Like, I was afraid of putting myself out there. I was like, oh, what are my friends going to think, right? If they see me online. Uh, and that, that lack of confidence on speaking of what I was learning, right? Like, hey, I want to speak about marketing. Just put yourself out there and speak about marketing, right? And one of the biggest benefits of publishing and creating content, just consistently just putting yourself out here has been that, like, the removal of that fear of judgment. It's like, hey, we're okay, right? Like, <laughs> we're going to share our ideas now. 
we're gonna be silly, you know, if if we make a mistake, we embrace it, that's totally fine. And what we have found out is that like people actually enjoy that even more, right? Like if we make a mistake, they laugh with us, right? And they're like, oh dude, that was that's awesome. That was pretty funny, right? And that builds actually ends up building up our own confidence, which is pretty cool. So have you noticed anything like that in your journey or your or your customers' journeys? Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, and and it, it's interesting because I've probably worked with almost every single type of emotion <laughs> attached to the content creation process as far as getting people comfortable and ready for camera. Uh, and in some ways, it's even... Uh, you're prepped even further uh, when you help female clients uh, because like, as you noted, um, the attention on appearance and looking yeah. their best is even more important for them, which is incredible. Like I, I appreciate yes. that. And so actually yeah. a lot of my clients end up being uh, like lean more towards women because of the approach we do take that helps women feel comfortable, you know, feel confident and look amazing on camera. And, and I find that uh, definitely comes down to consistency in publishing, um, but also recognizing that your first video is not going to be that great. Um, <laughs> visually, it can be good, yeah. you know, as, but as far as your delivery goes, especially if you're live or if you're pre-recorded, you know, you got to understand that uh, as you guys can, you know, totally relate, right? Like if you pre-record it, then you can edit out all of the mistakes yep. and come off more polished. But if you're live like this, then you're going to get all the um, their mannerisms or, or just the action. Uh, but, but, but guess like each, each person is going to point out the odd imperfections in their appearance or how they deliver something uh, over than anyone else. Unless you, you know, like my wife points out things that I may not notice <laughs> and because she's a critic for me. But uh, no, so recognizing like you're always going to be your first critics and then maybe your partner or spouse uh, but, but recognizing too, that your message doesn't have to be hundred percent clear by the time you start publishing. Yeah. Cause that, that will, all that perfectionism will also like stop you from actually hitting up and just bring your brand voice and getting comfortable. And, and I, I was completely clear when I started publishing in some form. Um, I started my podcast probably two years ago under a different name, literally just to invite people, have a conversation and just to meet people online. Uh, kind of giving me that excuse, uh, and uh, and so in doing so, you're able to develop your voice, and then you can start to infuse your your message better throughout uh, each episode or each type of content. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, like part of the reason why we started the podcast too was like we wanted to meet cool people, just like you, right? We're like, man, like what a better excuse, you know, like. When are we going to get the chance in the world to, you know, maybe be in the same room or have a one on one conversation with these like awesome people? Right. So I encourage everybody like starting certain type of show and it doesn't have to be a podcast. Like we created another one immediately because we're like we want to have more conversations and we created like this like little smaller size content is profit. We call it Content Bites. It's on Instagram live. And we invite other entrepreneurs and we do like 15, 20 minute live sessions with them. And it's absolutely amazing, right? It, it helps us connect. And at the same time, we're developing the skill of putting ourselves out there. And what you were saying is true. Like when we go live, we don't have to edit. So we, we ended up like embracing the mistakes. And at first we didn't want to go live. And that was the friction, right? Because we would literally for one episode, we were like 10 minutes already in. And we're like, no, we don't like it. Let's stop it. Let's start all over again. And we will go all over again. So your confidence goes a little bit lower. It's like, oh, man, I messed up. It's, it's okay. We're going to get it next time, right? And, yeah, it, it just adds la layers of friction, man. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh, Dali, I have a question, right? Like you you mentioned uh, or we mentioned on the intro that you've done mm -hmm. several campaigns, right? And uh, we mentioned this um, this topic a couple times. You know, when we first started the show, we saw a trend of different views, people were like watching or whatever, right? And then we're like, okay, we actually have to actually promote this, the show, right? So to get more people to do it. So we, you know, we started calling it content campaigns and different things. And, and it's been massive, it's been super fun to actually try different things and see what works, what doesn't. So I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, what do you think about campaigns? How do you look 
at them? And then how can a business can uh, make the most out of that campaign? Yeah, that's a great question. I look at a campaign through two lenses. Uh, the first one is a political campaign for your business. And the second one is really like you're launching a movie. Um, mm. and, and ask yourselves, okay, in these two types of campaigns, what actions and activities are taking? Because a campaign is a series of marketing activities that serve a greater purpose. Like political campaign, naturally the candidate needs to get elected into office. That's the win. And that means the campaign was successful. Yeah. Maybe in your business, if you're going to launch a new product, it's asking yourself, um, you know, like what would be successful? What would be that election? What would election day look like? Right. Or that launch successful launch look like, and then how can I build backwards? So begin with the end of mind and build backwards and plan out the series of messages that are needed to guide my customer from where they currently are to where they need to be to be ready to buy. Mm. Uh, and then as far as looking at the lens through a movie, uh, movies are, are uh, kind of a masterclass, uh, the success of movies, masterclass in effective marketing campaigns. Yeah. Uh, because there is a clear launch date of a new product, aka a movie, you know, like a two hour movie in the theater, or maybe now like streaming is um, booming even more. Yeah. And you know, so you know there is a clear due date and so it's building backwards to know, okay, what are all these materials? What are these mini clips or trailers uh, customized by platforms? What kind of press releases need to go out? Then, you know, you got the actors or some of the crew going on a campaign of sorts, traveling the world or country or doing interviews in some sort. So there's an entire like orchestrated uh, effort, you know, all this effort coming from all these people related to the project, all to serve that launch date to make sure it's as successful as it can be. Yeah. And and you gotta believe too, uh, and maybe people don't know this, but accountants are actually a primary part of uh, a movie release. Uh, mm. Accountants can predict and actually tell directors and studios, hey, you should hire The Rock, mixed in with Jack Black, mixed in with Kevin Hart, you know, like Jumanji reference, but yes, you know, mix in these actors because that will be the perfect formula to have this kind of return. And so accountants are doing all this financial planning. You get the business side of show business uh, yeah. to contribute to this in successful campaign. And so um, no matter how you shake it, uh, there's business strategy and marketing strategy behind every successful launch of a product of any any type. Yeah. And so um, to me, yeah, it's definitely a series of activities, marketing activities uh, and content is just one piece of that overall experience um, to have a successful um, often product launch. Yeah, wow. I, I, I love it. The way that you broke it down, you know, we've we've heard several times about the, the movie reference. And, you know, since we've heard it, it's like, hey, let's actually pay attention. What's happening? Right. And And, you know, for the time that we're recording now. My wife is a huge Disney fan, so mm -hmm. she was pretty bummed that Mulan is actually not going to be in the movie theater, right? But it's going to be on Disney Plus, right? And they're talking about they're actually going to release it at a price point, right, to actually make the money of that. But the campaign has been the same, right? The, these artists have been in every single talk show. There's been, like, massive press releases. Every YouTube artist has been talking the behind the scenes or whatever, right? Is a series of events, you know, leading to, you know, uh, the big one, like you said, like the do they, right? And I love that you broke it down as a political campaign, a movie campaign, because this campaign, this campaign, the picture for those that don't understand it. And, and you can, if you own a business or if you're starting to create these pieces of content to help you sell something, right? That moment when you start selling that something, that's your launch. That, that's your thing. So go out and take inspiration from this. And yes, content, you know, like the one that you guys produce, like the one that we produce are pieces to help you on that journey to actually have that successful launch. So uh, thank you for, for breaking it down that way. I'm, I'm painting the picture because we feel like that's a topic that sometimes is... is uh, nobody pays attention to it. They're like, I'm just going to post this thing and, you know, they're going to do all the job and I'm going to be a millionaire, right? And it's not like that. It, it just takes uh, a little bit more um, yeah, on every single part. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and definitely don't overwhelm yourself too because I think, absolutely. you know, I, I find it uh, <laughs> interesting. I know oh, we, have, we have a little bit. Um, I find it interesting, like uh, one person I look up to is Bob Iger, who's soon to um, step down fully from CEO. 
of uh, of Disney, and uh, in his process of getting hired and, and placed in that that role, probably like 15 years ago, was a campaign experience where he was advised by a political advisor to say, simplify your leadership action plan into three simple areas that you yeah. can basically go on the campaign trail, pitch, deliver, and reuse your same message over and over again because messaging is a practice and repetition. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your your audience um, is going to hear a lot of the same messages over and over again, maybe some tweaks and words, but they should be hearing this repeat messaging because if they're not, that means you don't have a clear message you're yeah. delivering. That's so awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, I highly encourage people to go check out Bob Iger's story. Like his book was amazing. And uh, it's so good. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> um, just to start wrapping it down, uh, Dan, what are some action points that people can take like today to improve their content game? Yeah. It goes back to messaging. You know, we, I think we hit that pretty hard this episode. Yeah. I love it. Is, um, don't, don't allow uh, yourself to not create and publish mm -hmm. um, if you don't feel like you're clear in your message. But the more you can focus on the language you use with your customers and, and get a really clear message going, uh, the more your content will actually be impactful, and attract the right people, uh, and then put that into a marketing campaign. Uh, understand how marketing works and, and then your content will be more impactful and you're not just throwing out random pieces of content <laughs> just because you think you should. Love it. Love it. Now, two more. They're quick. One, I think is the most important part in this mm -hmm. in this show ever. Where would you be if you did not start publishing? Oh, man. Unheard and unseen. Uh, you know, I, I think you would be, I, I would be the best kept secret, right? <laughs> like, early on, I got connected with some key players who are popular uh, in, in the online space, uh, in our communities, and... If, uh, if I, you know, like if I didn't start publishing, interacting with people, I would be, uh, a best kept secret. And I think the more we can publish and put yourselves out there, uh, the more that you'll begin to be recognized, even if it's by pop, small communities of people, like that's all it really takes. You don't need to be yeah. popular and known by everyone. Um, but I think ultimately most people, um, either secretly or very openly, want to be famous in some way <laughs> yeah. um want to be recognized you know want to be known loved and trusted yeah. uh you can't deny that we want some fame in it right you know like we strive for that power <laughs> and uh, and so publishing is going to make that possible for you awesome man yeah, thank Th you thank you so much how how can people connect with you where can they find you if they want to chat more about the messaging um about you where can they go yeah for sure First off, before I say that, I do want to set the record straight. Your intro was incredible, <laughs> but I'm not a two com I'm not a two comma club winner. Oh, okay. Um, people have to listen all the way to the end to get that clarification. But <laughs> it's uh, all good. Um, <laughs> it's all good. It made me feel good. I'm Come like, on, Fonzie. I'm I'm sorry, I, very, very I, I feel like I saw a picture of you holding it with Russell and really. Yeah, I, I'm, is that deep I, face app, bro? Maybe. Is that the, the deep fake? Yeah, may, maybe so, <laughs> someone deep did fake, a collection. That was. I was like, I'm going to be one of those. I'll be one of those bro marketers who, <laughs> you know, puts, puts visuals out there like, follow me because I've, you know, I've done this. No, I I haven't yet, but uh, but very soon, yes. Uh, but we're, we're, manifesting. We're, we're manifesting. We're manifesting for you. Home. It's very all good. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it was perfect. I, like I said, I could have said nothing and I'm like, yeah, like I'll just own that. I'll own that identity <laughs> right now. No, it's all good. So I think I caught, I cut off your, your links or how, when people or where can people find you? Yeah. Content supply.com simply. That's where you can learn about everything we're up to. And then the same thing on the social is that, and then Dallin need. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. I do encourage everybody to go content supply.com. Uh, I checked the page. It has a lot of resources. You know, you guys have some awesome courses as well. Lots of blogs. So Ooh. guys, go check him out. Cause so awesome. I mean, after this conversation, you know that he knows what he's talking about. So you gotta yeah. listen to him. Dude, Dan, thank you so much. We're gonna say bye to the podcast audience. Don't leave yet. Uh, with that being said, 
Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead, don't forget to subscribe. Hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at Beast Brisco. That is right, guys. And if you find this episode impactful, which I am sure you did, don't forget to share it and and leave a five-star review. Thank you, Let's guys. Let's go.